Yeah, that's true. They should come on. But it is done. It's a quite a remarkable 2.35 or 2.5 something. Ah, correct. More than 2. Yes. 2 crore. Yes. Single day. Correct. correct. It's a good, very good achievement. Actually, because of that only cases, though the cases are increasing, but it is not increasing that astronomically. No, but actually in Karnataka number is much, much less as the official number is concerned. See, whatever it comes online, only we can tell. Yes, sir, we can start, sir. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Karthik. So, people have come? Yes, sir. So, we'll start now. Okay. So, so please. Okay. Agarwa, sir. Uh, thank you, then. I will start yeah. my talk. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, good afternoon to all friends. Uh, I'm continuing my earlier lecture, Thermal Control System for Spacecraft. Uh, earlier, I covered uh, two parts, that is the introduction to the heat transfer related to the spacecraft design and subsequently I gave in part two, uh, what are the major things are involved in satellite thermal design and analysis. Now I am going to cover the next point is the thermal fabrication and the implementation of the thermal element on the satellite. So before going to that area, I will give a small background that uh, with respect to spacecraft, once you see, once we complete, uh, once we get all the inputs related to the satellite, like power, dimension, location, and all the interfaces. We do detailed uh, thermal analysis for the input available for the different subsystems, including the power and power, uh, uh, you can say, uh, distribution and all things, details. So once we get all the details, we do carry out the detailed thermal analysis of the satellite and we come to the conclusion or we arrive at a uh, required thermal design for the satellite. This required thermal design is basically includes what extent the satellite required a cooling through the uh, windows we can throw the excess heat to the deep space rest of the satellite will be covered with multi-layer insulation. I will tell you all those terms I am using, I will explain in subsequent slides after some time. One word, one uh, abbreviation I am using is optical solar reflector. Wherever there are windows, it is covered by OSR, while rest of the satellite is covered with what we refer as multi-layer insulation. So once we come to the uh, stage where the total design is finalized, we estimate the detailed temperature distribution, including the temperature variation during an orbit for different subsystem in the satellite. And we confirm that all the temperatures remains well within the uh, specification. So, once we complete this work, this whole data is converted or documented in detail in a document and this document is reviewed by an expert committee from the satellite side, from the different centers at our ISRO level. So if there is any uh, clarification, any changes required, we do incorporate those changes in the design and subsequently we repeat the analysis portion again. So once we finalize the ther detailed thermal analysis, we get the design, then that de detailed design is documented in a separate document and that document is supplied to the, the implementation engineers and they do carry out subsequent different implementation activity. Basically, it gives the varieties of uh, drawings where it is showing what are different 
uh, think treatments are essential for different part of the satellite. Now I will start my third portion where I stopped last time. Now this part three will cover the spacecraft thermal control elements. Under that, I'm talking about the fabrication and implementation of thermal control elements. The general broader outline, what I'm going to cover is introduction, spacecraft structure, multi-layer insulation, optical solar reflector, thermal control coating, diffuser plate and heat sink plates. Now, with different thermal control element, whatever we use for the satellite is the different surface treatment for different elements of the satellite where it may be high maintenance coating or maybe low maintenance coating. We use what we call a rigid OSR, all flexible OSR. This term in detail, I will explain subsequently. Then we use multi-layer insulation, which is supposed to be called super insulation. Then different heat sinks, then thermal conducting grease, heaters and temperature sensors. Now, with different elements, what we use for thermal control element, they are broadly divided into two parts. They are either active or passive. Most of these elements, what we use for thermal implementation are passive elements. The major advantage of passive element is they are easy to implement. Their so-called availability is much easy and it does not depend on any external source. So we have that we called as fixed radiator window, which is covered with OSR. Then thermal isolation, some of the system do require some kind of isolation. We use isolation washer there. Then one more term is multi-layer insulation. Then different coatings we use for different surfaces of the packages or satellite surfaces, thermal grease as an interface material for the packages. Then uh, the small satellite do not require, but some of the very high dissipating satellites like INSAT, they require heat pipe because their dissipation levels are in few kilowatts. So they need to use heat pipes. Then if required is a phase change material. Then in case of active method, Thermal heaters are called active control. If it is in auto, sometimes they can be overread and it can be used as manual thermal lures or fluid loop system. This fluid loop system is mainly again used for very hard dissipating satellite. Now, before going to varieties of structure and structure treatment, I will, in a nutshell, I will tell you what are the function of satellite structure. Satellite structure acts as a platform or you can say the total skeleton or a chassis for the whole satellite because it accommodates various subsystem including payload, the proportion different lines as well as it gives the support interfaces and support for the all the subsystems. Structural integrity provides relative position and stability because whenever we locate different packages in the satellite, they need to be uniformly distributed such that stability of the satellite will be uh, very good. So imbalance will be least. Then mechanical loading, load bearing means different packages will have different mass and its interaction with a panel. So it does acts as a load bearing member, different panels acts as a load bearing member for the different payloads or the 
packages. This structure, it does provide an electrical as well as thermal conductive path for most of the satellite subsystem because invariably most of the satellite panels where we mount the packages are made up of honeycomb core with aluminium face sheet because aluminium has very good conductivity. And obviously last but not least is the mechanical interface of the satellite with the launch vehicle. That is one of the important thing is the last activity actually is carried out when our satellite interfaces with the launcher fourth stage. So design mainly dictated by by uh, launch interfaces mass envelope envelope and payload and the configuration of different subsystems. Now, uh, as I told you earlier, there are varieties of satellite we have come across. One is we call nano satellite. Uh, and I just referred it, the satellite which are coming up to the 10 kg category, including the payload, they are referred as a nano satellite. This nano satellite structure is made up of uh, uh, milled plates actually there are six milled plates will be there of the order of 150 by 150 or maybe around 200 by 200 uh, with the thickness of about uh, 2 to 3 mm all these um, uh, milled plates are made up from aluminium alloy so and this all these uh, aluminium plates they are well connected with each other so that good conduction coupling exists among all the five uh, surfaces including the top deck. Now top deck that plate is separately removed and given to the payload interface purpose. So as and when is possible they assemble the payload implement all other thermal and other accessories and then they interface with the satellite in the four corners that's how all the six panels which are milled plates are well connected with each other and they have got very good conduction coupling now with a small satellite which may be of the order of 100 to 150 kg category their structure sometimes it can be made of a Crisscross heat pipes. Sorry, it is made of a, a different uh, uh, honeycomb structure with aluminium face sheet, and enclosure is completed with providing the additional honeycomb structure with aluminium face sheet. Now, whenever this aluminium honeycomb core with face sheet is fabricated, this has got a separate fabrication process that they take this honeycomb core which can be which can have thickness in the range of 12 mm to 100 mm depending upon the requirement of the load carrying capacity and it is provided with a face sheet of approximately 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 mm thick this aluminium face sheet is made up of aluminium 20 24 because this aluminum 2024 has very good uh, adhesion to the honeycomb core with the given adhesive. Now, similar thing you can see the same satellite after assembly how it looks like. This is how that hexagonal looks like, and this is the interface ring which has got direct coupling or direct connection to the four stage of the satellite. So whenever satellite is injected, it gets separated along with the interface ring, which is a part of the satellite and it gets detached from the fourth stage. Uh, with us to medium and big satellite, they can be uh, of the order of 1.5 meter by 1.6 meter by 1.1 meter. 
most of the time their uh, panels are with a center cylinder made up of CFRP and these panels are made up of honeycomb core of the, si the size of 25 to 40 mm core with aluminum face sheet of 0.2 mm. All those uh, uh, face sheets are anodized using the chromic acid anodized anodization and they are bonded to the honeycomb core that acts as a base for the different packages and the other subsystems. So these are small satellite. This is for uh, structure. Now, with coming back to different packages in a satellite, most of the packages initially they were made up of aluminum alloy. If the package is made up of aluminum alloy, then it will be anodized with sulfuric acid uh, anodization or sometimes chromic acid. Invariably, it is carried out with sulfuric acid anodization because sulfuric acid anodization is comparatively cheaper and it is commercially easily available in the market. Then recently, by virtue of magnesium alloy, uh, because its density is lower than aluminum alloy. See, aluminum alloy has got density of 2.7, while magnesium has density of 1.8, that is gram per cc. So to reduce the mass of the packages, many packages are made up of magnesium alloy. Only one should keep in mind, magnesium alloy is costly as well as machining is very, very difficult. Only thing is, overall mass of the packages reduces. That's why they use magnesium alloy. So if you use magnesium alloy for the packages, they are directly, what they call a new treatment, is a black anodization. It's a combination of anodization and black painting. Now, for the satellite inside surfaces as well as external surfaces, varieties of treatments are provided. Most of the satellite panels, internal surface is provided with a black paint. Its intention is if you provide black paint, then most of the, most of the satellite panel will have very good interaction, radiation interaction with each other and that's how they can have better uh, heat transfer, better heat distribution among the different panels. But whenever there is a specific requirement, like sometimes we call battery panel or battery area, sometimes we like to isolate that particular zone from surrounding, then such area we provide what you call low maintenance step so that its radiation exchange with surrounding panels will be least. So uh, its emissivity value is only 0 0.05 as against the uh, IR emittance of black point as 0.9. So that's how battery panel can be comfortably isolated by, uh, by means of low emittance for radiation purpose from the surrounding all other packages. Now coming back to some of the antennas, some of these antennas are provided with a white paint. Its intention of white paint on front side is whenever solar energy directly falls on the antenna, then majority of the uh, energy, solar energy, it gets reflected back. For example, if we say its absorptive is 0.2, that means more than 80% of the energy, it gets reflected back and the peak temperature of the antenna can be constrained or can be lowered, can be maintained well within the specified limit. So that is why we use many antennas with a white pen. Now, one more turn, optical solar pen, I will explain in detail its application. Basically, optical solar reflectors are like a house mirror. Now, its uh, 
uh, intention is any energy whenever it falls on those optical solar reflector or what we call as OSR, the energy gets reflected back as high as more than 90 to 92 percent and rest of the energy of the order of 8 to 10 percent get absorbed into the surface. This optical solar reflector is made up of fused silica of the order of 250 micron and it is provided with an adhesive on the aluminium anodized surface. While backside of this uh, fused silica glass is provided with a silver coating such that any energy whenever it falls on the surface energy reaches up to the bottom of the quartz glass and then it get reflected back so this is what we call as optical solar reflector whenever we have so called uh, a high dissipating package or concentrated uh, heat dissipation in the satellite we provide what we call as optical windows these windows are provided with optical solar reflector so that whenever any solar energy falls on that more than 90 percent to 92 percent gets reflected back but maximum extent the energy from inside the satellite is thrown to the deep cold space as you may be aware the deep space is as cold as what they are referring as 4.2 degree kelvin so since the deep space is very cold energy can be reflected to the deep space very easily similarly this particular optical solar reflector can be put only on the panel but sometimes we do have what you call as curvature kind of thing or comparatively low uh, thickness uh, sheets like uh, packages then for that purpose they use teflon 5 mil teflon films for that they give the silver coating on the uh, back side and because of that it acts as a flexible it uh, they form in form of tape it can be put any of the packages or any curved surfaces and for protection purpose they give ITO coating because this ITO coating protects from the atomic oxygen or any of the charged particle so this teflon coated is referred as flexible OSR where the fused silica is referred as rigid OSR now one should keep in mind this teflon base has got comparatively higher degradation rate because it is made up of a teflon teflon is prone for comparatively higher degradation so generally most of the satellite we use only fused silica which is called rigid OSR only for pure packages or curved surfaces we use the teflon based OSR for example uh, I give one simple example like this interface ring which is a curvature we use the only flexible OSR which receives the sun load where more than 90% or 85% is thrown back to space only 10% or 50% of the solar energy is absorbed so this is the advantage of the flexible OSR now next uh, one more major atom after the optical solar reflector is the multi-layer insulation blanket this multi-layer insulation blanket is one of the major element of the thermal it basically consists of aluminized mylar uh, you uh, might have come across what one material what they call as mylar this mylar is coated on either side with a silver coating of the thickness of 20 to 25 angstrom one angstrom is 10 raised to minus 10 meter so by virtue of coating on both the side and using those number of layer it is called multi-layer insulation functionally it acts like our thermos in our house 
if you have seen thermos it consists of a glass surface while that in between two walls it is actually evacuated so by virtue of evacuating and given silver coating that inside quantity liquid quantity does not lose the heat or do get any heat or uh, loss of heat to the surrounding and the object inside like tea coffee it can be kept warm or if you want any cold uh, atom is kept inside it remains cold similar functionality is used in case of multi layer insulation blanket which is uh, coated both the side with silver coating and such parallel sheets are used in the range of 10 to 20 and in uh, to avoid any two such sheets not to touch each other a polyester net is used in between so that no uh, alumina sheets touches each other they join together and external surface innermost and outermost surface is provided with 1 mil or 2 mil kapton sheet which is again provided with aluminum coating on inside while the outside has ito coating this together is actually stitched and the stitch together forms a multi layer insulation actually if you see this kapton whatever we see a plain kapton and if you give silver coating from inside of the order of 100 angstrom and i told you one ang one angstrom equal to 10 raised to minus 10 meter that by virtue of silver coating from inside from outside it looks like a gold plate actually this gold coating gold picture what you get or appearance you get is by virtue of so called aluminum coating from inside the surfaces so this forms a multi layer insulation it is a very good insulation once you use this insulation amount of energy that is crossing or entering into the satellite is very very small so you need to make precisely very limited cut out in the blanket only to throw the excess heat to the deep space otherwise most of the area of the satellite will be covered with the multi layer insulation blanket this polyester net basically is you is uh, uh, acts as a uh, insulator and it does not allow any two sheets to touch each other so this is how the multi layer insulation acts or behaves with the function of thermopask this is what actually one sample i am showing of multi layer insulation blanket and to have its interact this is the polyester net and uh, this is aluminum uh, polymide with tcc coating actually and it and one more thing one should keep in mind all this aluminum sheets including the kapton it is perforated because at the launch pad you will have good amount of inner air is trapped inside the satellite that has to be allowed once satellite get injected into the deep space in a, at an altitude of 500 or 600 or 800 targeted altitude then that air in the due course of time gets out or get injected into the deep space through those holes so all those external surfaces except the osr you will see that they are perforated so you can see that no air get trapped inside the satellite now sometime to have the better interaction with the satellite it is used as a velcro what they call male and female one portion is attached to the satellite and another portion is connected to the blanket back side so they are basically this blanket will have contact with the satellite only at the intervals of the wherever we stitch or we attach the velcro tape so this is how maximum extent satellite is insulated from the deep space using multi layer insulation now one more term 
what we called as diffuser plate. You must come across that many times many packages do have high dissipation during certain activity or sometimes it may continuously dissipate high power. Now once this high power is dissipated which most of the energy is converted into the heat that energy need to be thrown to the dish space but since the area of the package is comparatively lower to diffuse that or to distribute that heat over a large area we use what we call diffuser plate this diffuser plate is made up of aluminium most of the time it is they use uh, alloy 6061 which has got conductivity conductivity of the order of 180 watt per meter degree kelvin and since this heat gets uh, uh, so called uh, distributed along the length and then it is mounted on the panel so the flux level that is the unit area dissipation of the package reduces because what was the area available here it is getting distributed in large area its flux level come down that heat energy can be comfortably thrown across the honeycomb structure panel via OSR to the deep space this is with respect to the some kind of hard dissipation where it is continuously dissipating the energy the same thing in case if that dissipation is intermittent for example some of the remote sensing satellite they dissipate this dissipation a very high dissipation only for short duration anywhere between three minutes to ten minutes very short duration then what happens you rest of the time they cannot dissipate anything any heat so we cannot give directly cooling to those packages so what we do we give comparatively thick plate right below the package of the order of 5 mm so that that heat can be transferred to that thick plate easily and it gets stored you say three minutes or five minutes while the rest of the time you say for example satellite orbit is around 100 minutes then uh, except the five minutes rest of the 95 minute the stored energy is lost to the surrounding by virtue of radiation because during that time it do not dissipate the heat and as such it is not having any cutout in the blanket so that this heat energy intermittently stored and thrown back to the surrounding packages surrounding panels only by radiation this is called as a sink plate that basically used only for the intermittent dissipation packages now whenever we talk about temperature measurement on board the satellite we have got varieties of uh, temperature sensors that are available uh, for the satellite see for example when we uh, talk about uh, um, thruster chamber see in uh, is low earth orbit satellite we use uh, some kind of one newton or ten newton kind of thrusters uh, there is a thruster chamber they use monopropellant and they uh, once they fire this uh, liquid temperature after firing the fume temperature does go as high as thousand degrees centigrade so such cases if you have to measure the chamber temperature and nearby thing you have to use necessary thermocouple the thermocouples are used in case of chamber temperature measurement where this uh, fume temperature or the chamber temperature uh, has this since we call about uh, large temperature range its accuracy is as high as only 5 degree it cannot measure better than 5 degree because we are talking about the as high temperature as 1000 degree centigrade these thermocouples are made up of varieties of two different metals together like copper constantum kind of thing and in view of that uh, uh, joint you can measure the temperature rise 
in the given chamber temperature, which is generally used on board for the thruster chamber purpose. Now, second is called platinum resistance thermometers. These platinum resistance thermometers are generally used for the all external elements like any of the blanket or any of the packages which are sitting outside satellite or it may be used even some of the probes which are sitting outside satellite they can measure temperature in the range of minus 250 to plus 400 but by virtue of this large variation measurement capacity their accuracy is only up to plus minus 2 degree centigrade this is used for all external appendages as i told earlier uh, like mli blanket and related some of the external use now most of the satellite inside where i required a very good accuracy where the measurement is carried out in the range of minus 50 to plus 50 150 then since the temperature is in narrow range these thermistors are basically semiconductors their uh, accuracy is uh, as best as uh, 0.8 but if you narrow down the temperature range for example for, for the payload say 0 to 40 kind of thing you can get accuracy as low as miss uh, accuracy uh, precision as low as 0.1 to 0.2 degrees centigrade so wherever required a narrow temperature range measurement you can get use thermistor but only thing is beyond that particular range what is specified they saturate and they do not show any change in temperature that is only the limitation but you can get very good accuracy by virtue of such a narrow temperature range with accuracy of 0.1 or 0.2 mainly it is used for the payload purpose now on board you must be seeing in case some some kind of contingencies wherever required or sometimes you need to maintain the temperature of the sub systems in the narrow temperature range then you need to use the heater there are two different varieties of heaters are there one is called tape heater and another is called foil heater this tape heater basically consists of enamel heating elements you can see here 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 and they are sandwiched between the thin flexible one fiberglass cloth this and this you can see either side and kept on kept on is basically as an insulator and here major advantage is one single strip will carry two different heaters which you can use one as a main and other as a redundant that is the major advantage of the tape heater and they are quite flexible they are used especially for the uh, plumbing means what you call uh, uh, for the uh, plumb line purpose they use the such a flexible heaters where they can be wrapped around the uh, plumb line which is made up of either stainless steel or titanium and it is further covered with multi-layer insulation blanket they can operate or they can sustain up to minus 100 to plus 180 degree then foil heaters are like a strip this these strips are something similar what you are coming across with respect to our uh, uh, iron box you will see in the iron box inside you will see similar heaters what what are the heaters? they are each foil resistive element laminated between very thin kept on layers and use for the panel whenever you want some kind of emergency heaters or condensed heaters we are some of the packages required some of the heaters we use these foil heaters its capacity is quite high and operating the major range under which they can operate when they can be switched on or off is minus 65 to 150 this is the intention of using tape heaters or foil heaters they are essential especially whenever you require to maintain the temperature in a given specific range. Now, one more item what we come across thermal interface material. 
whenever we uh, get any of the package fabricated see for example this is one of the plate of the package and this is the face sheet actually if you look uh, under the microscope there is a gap in fact what we call probably you must come across in mechanical what is the flat uh, flatness of the machining what we get is of the order of 100 micron to 150 micron best what we can get for any aluminium plate so by virtue of that once you are putting this package on the panel you will get there is a interval gaps where package do not have contact with the panel now how to avoid this so for this purpose what we use the different material what we call filler material is thermal conducting grease sigraflex or chotherm sigraflex and chotherm are flexible materials once you put it in between it goes and get crushed there and it improves the contact between the package and the panel but best is thermal grease which once you apply a pressure on the package while bolting this gets filled in between and gives much much better coupling between the package and the panel so most of the time we use thermal conducting grease for the satellite to improve the conduction coupling within the package and the panel and it is a must for the packages those are having comparatively high dissipation levels so for high dissipation level packages we always say because you cannot get the flatness better than 100 to 150 micron because any further improvement means it causes for the cost and that is why we always use thermal grease to fill up this gap and that so coupling become much easier heat flows easily to the panel through this uh, higher coupling between the package and the panel with use of thermal this this is the one more parameter now this completes my what you call as thermal uh, element matter but there are few things which probably i might have missed is what you call as isolation now for example, whenever a satellite is mounted on, on one of the panel and that particular package is having some kind of high dissipating element, then many times that package is isolated using GFRP spacers at the interface and in many of the antennas, if you come across, they are also isolated using GFRP spacer at the interface so that temperature variation of that package do not transfer or take the heat from the satellite so like this we can take care of the localized temperature variation of the package but not affecting the satellite interfaces or satellite side so this is one of the major advantage of uh, using the um, uh, spacer for satellite most of the antenna wherever we see those are the external elements are coming we use uh, filler material we, as a non-metallic things as a fiberglass now part four this is the last portion of my presentation that is spacecraft thermal testing the broader way uh, outline it uh, includes the introduction testing concept thermal balance test thermal vacuum test now many time this uh, question is asked that uh, why do you require the thermal testing or what are these uh, aims and all things now to check the performance of the any package or the satellite with respect to specification then to evaluate and qualify the different material we are used or different processes and the workmanship workmanship in the sense you would have come across any package means it consists of number of pcb cards it will uh, it is housing lot of different electrical component 
like a diode or maybe transistor or ICs. So how they get connected to the PCB card, that is very important. And all that workmanship, is there any problem that will come out in the testing time? One more intention is to verify and validate thermal control design of packages, subsystem payload, and the entire integrated spacecraft because this is basically to take care of the thermal balance test because whenever you do analysis it need to do some kind of testing to get a confidence about the analysis portion of the satellite to demonstrate and evaluate functioning of the spacecraft under simulated thermal optical electrical and vacuum environment for the integrated satellite testing time now what are test objectives environmental stress screening turn on capability and survival demonstration environmental stress screening means satellite will undergo extreme high and extreme cold temperatures it will undergo the cycling the turn on means sometimes we need to switch on satellite at comparatively low temperature or maybe at high temperature and survivability demonstration means suppose the satellite is kept off for long duration how does it supports or it and uh, it acts or it behaves if it switch on after a long time that is a survival demonstration now spacecraft testing is carried out for the following purpose one is thermal cycle test, spacecraft thermal balance test, spacecraft thermo vacuum test. Now, very first we say thermal cycle test, this most of the time, any new package, once it is fabricated, it undergoes the thermal cycling. It may be number of cold and hot cycles, it has to undergo to, it may be short cycle of hot and cold under the ambient air or gases nitrogen environment to reveal the workmanship by chance if there is any fault while making the uh, fabrication of that particular package or if there is any defect in the materials whatever you use so that will come out in the thermal cycling and especially it is more important for the packages individual packages so we number of packages we see before it gets assembled on the satellite it does undergo thermal cycle test then second thing is spacecraft thermal balance test is carried out to gain a confidence in the mathematical modeling and sufficiency of the thermal design whenever we do so-called thermal mathematical modeling we calculate the temperatures of the given configuration with a lot of inputs available some of the major properties some of the catalog values so based on that whenever we do any kind of estimation of temperature under various configuration we do get some kind of uncertainty in the prediction so to confirm that that temperature can be withstand or it can provide comfortable temperature throughout the mission period of the satellite and we get full confidence in our mathematical model we carry out what we call thermal balance test so mainly it is carried out with solar simulation in a chamber now thermo vacuum test is carried out for the integral satellite spacecraft level so that all the packages inside uh, miss uh, they will already assemble along with the satellite and they are this thermo vacuum test is tested different packages under extreme temperature boundary so that the satellite will have no doubt under which configuration it is tested anything so it will always be tested under the extreme temperature except on level at lower as well as higher temperature so that throughout mission period of the life you will not face any problem with the satellite configuration now for any thermal testing purpose initially once you want to do any test 
it is always a test plan a report is prepared this report basically includes the spacecraft configuration that is going to be carried out during the testing if any changes are required we get feedback from different designers is there any limitation that also we try to incorporate during the testing then thermal configuration and temperature control plan for example thermal configuration means whenever i told you one uh, uh, configuration that satellite external surface if you see it is mainly what we see externally is either in the package isolation or it can be covered with optical solar reflector or OSR or what we call multi-layer insulation blanket. Most of the satellite we test without any MLA blanket so that it has got advantage of heating and cooling very fast. Otherwise, if the satellite thermovacuum test is carried out under the on orbit configuration, then satellite will take very huge time either to get heated or to cool down. So to avoid that, most of the blanket except critical like payload and battery, most of the multi-layer insulation blanket are removed. Such that what happens is satellite panel where the packages are mounted internally get directly exposed to the shroud which is comparatively at a low temperature. So when we switch off the external heaters, the satellite cools down very fast or whenever you want the satellite to get heated, we can make use of the heaters or IR lamp such that satellite panel and in turn the packages temperature can be increased easily with the IR lamp by virtue of heating the panel. So this is how some of the configuration taken. Then in advance, we always plan test profile, what are different tests need to be carried out. Then as you said earlier itself, you I pointed out temperature specification, we get it from the documentation, whatever we are given in the document, where we give the design, we give temperature specification. Then spacecraft preparation, so we need to prepare a satellite. For example, whenever we integrate the satellite, all the packages, we should be having very good, uh, all the thermal implementation completion, one need to check, then sequence of event, how the satellite is going to be uh, carried, uh, taken to the chamber, how it's going to be isolated from the, uh, the main lead, where it is getting uh, uh, connected or it is hanging in the chamber, how it is isolated from the surrounding by conduction coupling, only it will have radiation coupling. So in fact, what they do is they have some kind of angles at the wall of the chamber where they hang the satellite, some kind of spacer they use and some kind of uh, additional support they give so that actually the satellite is hanging in the chamber. So it will have only radiation coupling with the black shroud. Chamber temperature control is taken care by circulation of liquid nitrogen and any other specific requirement is there for example payload battery or any other subsystem that is taken care by additional some of the heaters and the insulation depending on its requirement because as a whole satellite the subsystem temperature maintenance becomes very very critical so for that purpose a separate temperature uh, provision uh, control provision is made for things like battery and the payload to maintain in the narrow temperature range now coming back to satellite again what happens is when you see the satellite where the panels are actually exposed to the cold atmosphere it does undergo the extreme temperature cycling temperature conditions. For example, I'm going to show you the uh, 
picture where it undergoes the very high temperature as well as very low temperature what is called as acceptance acceptance temperature limits now to take care of those extreme temperatures there is called cycling the satellite panel has to undergo and sustain that extreme temperature variation high vacuum actually you know that in uh, uh, when we called about uh, 760 mm of mercury that much pressure is there on the so called on the ground which is we call one atmosphere then same vacuum when it goes there vacuum can be of the order one into ten to two minus six minus seven kind of thing in the deep space so in case of vacuum in in the chamber we do uh, achieve as low mean as high vacuum as 10 rest to my 1 into 10 rest to minus 5 tor one tor is 1 mm of mercury so that much very high vacuum we get it in the chamber in fact in a deep space if you cross around 600 km you get as a 1 into 10 rest to minus 9 minus 10 rest to minus 10 that kind of vacuum we get but what best we can simulate in the chamber is around 1 into 10 rest to minus 6 Or one to one six. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, that order we get vacuum in the chamber, and chamber temperature with liquid nitrogen is kept as low as minus hundred degrees centigrade. The distortion due to alpha of the material. You are aware that different materials are used in the satellite. If the two different uh, materials are in contact, and if their coefficient of linear expansion is too much different, then what you call as a cold molecular welding. it takes place and if there is a relative motion then it can avoid relative motion what you call molecular welding it takes place so one has to take care of all these things while uh, maintaining the temperature of all such modulus then there is no convection exist because we are keeping the very good vacuum space crop charging effect also need to be studied in case of something is there so space craft is nicely uh, insulated it is well uh, connected for charging for one thing so nowhere space craft charging effect should come in this picture so that is taken care radiation and absence of gravity loads on the orbit also need to be studied now when we talk about thermo vacuum test how it is carried out in the chamber space craft thermo vacuum test is carried out under extreme temperature conditions refer as acceptance i told you earlier that uh, satellite we call as a design temperature where most of the time we target at the best on design the satellite temperature should not cross those boundaries for example for ele electronics packages in the range of 0 to 40 while we add additional 10 10 degree it is around minus 10 To plus 50, adding 10 degree margin, so that is called acceptance limits. So all the packages in the satellite are tested, electrons pack tested in the range of minus 10 to 50, 50, 50, 50. 50. So these are referred as acceptance temperature limit. For cold case, PESCAB is tested under extreme cold condition with minimum satellite power dissipation. Here, what we do is. wherever possible those subsystems only we test with rest of things we try to cool down or sometimes we increase the nitrogen uh, liquid nitrogen solution yeah, circulation and maintain the low temperature so but to reduce the load on chamber generally we do not switch on those packages which are not essential during the cold while in case of hot we exactly do other way that maximum extent all the packages are switched on with sufficient number of heater so that hot condition for the spacecraft can be simulated and is tested under the extreme hot condition with maximum power input from the mission. such cases in a huge load it comes on the chamber liquid nitrogen circulation purpose so that one should keep in mind now what are the environments are kept in the satellite spacecraft is stationary inside thermo vacuum chamber as i told you earlier many time it is hang hanging in the chamber shroud is maintained as minus 
this general thumb rule I told you minus 100 degrees centigrade shroud is maintained using the liquid nitrogen. But sometimes some of the packages, uh, let me see whether I have any picture, that for a small satellite, we, we, we cannot maintain because most of them, these uh, small satellites are tested in a small chamber. Instead of going to minus 100, they are maintained as low as minus 50, minus 60, such that satellite level temperature of those packages or panel, because in the size is small, can be maintained as low as some minus 10 or minus 15. And shroud temperature is accordingly varied to take care of the small satellite package level temperatures. But for most of the satellite, the shroud is maintained around minus 100 degrees centigrade. Vacuum man is maintained better than 1 into 10 to minus 6 tau. Spacecraft is isolated at the mounting interface with a different way, either spacing washers or it's just hanging, that kind of thing they take care. Air lamps or skin needles. Air lamps are used on the, with the air cage around the satellite such that its intensity can be improved, it can be increased so that directly heat energy get absorbed into the panel. Skin needles sometimes are also used for some of the panels to, main, to increase the temperature of the panel. Now, this is what cycle many times we use for thermo vacuum performance test purpose. Test and test probe temperature profile. Here, if you see that uh, whenever satellite it get uh, enter when the satellite is kept inside a chamber and the lid is closed first what they start from the ambient is when the lid is closed it gets isolated and the vacuum pump starts when the vacuum pump starts they see to that they confirm first the vacuum level inside the chamber is of the order of around minus 10 raised to minus 1 into 10 raised to minus 3 and then only slowly they start the cooling air circulation because what happens is in case by mistakes also if you start cooling early then there is a chance of condensation inside a satellite so to avoid that they always see that this uh, uh, this uh, cooling using liquid nitrogen is started only when vacuum reaches the 10 raised to minus 3. Then slowly they start cooling. Confirm that shroud temperature reaches as low as minus 70, minus 80 and slowly goes up to minus 100. Then only they start switching on further satellite on the elements and then slowly they start the cycle. So this is the first lower temperature satellite experiences, lower exceptional level. Then slowly they start rising the temperature by using the air lamp or the skin heater and then go to the high temperature. But this generally is taken care something like around 12 hours, not more than 12 hours. That's why they call two short cycles of each 12 hours and then subsequently they go ahead with two hot cycles, two cold cycles and so after that once two hot and two cold cycles are completed then they go to the long course of here actually this is very short duration of the little bit but here it is testing purpose satellite is maintained as low temperature as possible as acceptance level and the most of the subsystem testing is carried out so that you get a confidence that satellite will behave as expected or as you want during the cold cycle or cold stage. Similarly, all the stages are repeated under the another acceptance level at elevated temperature during the hot soap. This is also of the order of 72 hours. And then subsequently, coming back to NTP, they always go, instead of going from hot to directly to ambient, they always go slowly again on the cold cycle one hot cycle and then slowly 
they uh, bring the satellite temperature and then they switch off satellite temperature when it is vicinity of the first thing is they raise the show temperature bring the satellite temperature close to the ambient and then they slowly bring the satellite to the NTP normal temperature and pressure is how they complete the thermal vacuum test. This is something like our more than 25 days, 30 days test for the satellite will be carried out to complete the thermal vacuum test. What are the major thing we experience here actually that whenever we see short cycles that you see that early infant mortality failure that in case if there is any dry soldering if there is improper way, uh, soldering is carried out or any contacts between the chips or those diodes or maybe those uh, resistors if it is not capacitor if it is not there all the failures you will come back you will experience in the earlier two cycles then major all the failures if it is there you will see during the long cold and long hot cycle you will experience only thing is in case if you are stressing too much for long duration then it is called wear out failure then it is called over stressing of satellite there you will experience generally we avoid this these are things they take care maximum extent they do it in case if they fail anything else if they observe any kind of failure they break the um, test in between come to NDP correct it and again repeat the test actually this is what uh, i was referring that how the satellite getting completed so this is a satellite he wants structure and uh, so called it has got some kind of uh, panel which actually getting attached to the uh, satellite purpose for uh, testing purpose and major thing like these are the so called our one of the support plus payload is getting covered with MLI blanket while the rest of the satellite is kept as it is and it this is a small satellite you can see except the payload all other things is exposed to the shroud so that it can cool or heat very easily so you will not have much difficulty in maintaining either low temperature or high temperature now one more thing what we called i had told you earlier the when we do kind of analysis we do have our own limitation in the simulation of different load or estimation of temperature by virtue of mathematical modeling which itself is a part of our software actually because whenever we predict the calculation base itself will have some kind of limitation as far as the estimation of temperature is concerned Now, once you call estimation of temperature by mathematical modeling is uh, when we say rounding of error, there are many such limitations are there which can cause the temperature estimation error by virtue of uh, calculation of um, round of error. So many errors will be there in case of things. So to confirm that mathematical modeling errors are minimized, to demonstrate whatever we give the thermal control system as give as a documentation it is uh, sufficient or uh, suitability of the thermal control system so that is one of the reason we need to confirm for doing the thermal balance test verify the performance of the thermal hardware whatever hardware we implement for the satellite for the test so that undergoes different uh, uh, implication by virtue of this test then sensitivity of thermal conduct system with this parameter change see for example when we talk about uh, sensitivity in the sense see a particular package when switch on or the total dissipation in such satellite it increases by 100 watt what is the impact on the satellite temperature all such things we can confirm or we can estimate using the thermal balance test that is one of the major advantage in the thermal balance test and I will also tell you that the thermal balance test is always carried out using solar simulation test because it is one of the best test. It will give the least uh, error or least uh, information 
with respect to satellite testing is concerned. So solar seismic testing is better technique because of the actual cavity effect. See what happens if there are certain cavities are there in between any two objects, then shadow effects, thermo optical property, there are actually taken as the in orbit configuration of the satellite. And that is why it is always preferred method as a solar seismic test for thermo kind of system design validation because it takes care of all those things whatever we are going to experience in orbit so that is essential from thermal point of view usually thermal design of first satellite any new satellite configuration first time when it is carried out uh, depending on this power dissipation levels or its criticality if the satellite is developed first time we invariably suggest for the so uh, validation by solar simulation this sometimes thermal design is validated whenever there is a major change in the type of see some of the big satellite in the major changes are also incorporated we do suggest them to go ahead for the thermal balance test for the different payload configuration so this gives very good input as far as the um, so, so, uh, solar simulation uh, for mathematical modeling configuration purpose as well as the uh, to get any kind of uncertainty in the estimation this uh, satellite uh, thermal balance test is carried out in a chamber temperature of the chamber is maintained 100 k here just the one small point i will just tell you actually uh, most of you may be aware as i told you some time back that uh, the deep space temperature is around close to 4.2 degree Kelvin, which is based on different experiment. But actually in chamber, we the using the uh, liquid uh, nitrogen, we can, uh, use, we can uh, liquid nitrogen, we can achieve comfortably 100 K. So this kind of uncertainty, once you are talking about 100 degree Kelvin, it does creates in a built-in error of the drop around one and a half to two degree by simulating not zero k but hundred k. But by virtue of facility limitation, since we are using comfortably liquid nitrogen, this particular thing is kept in mind. And easily it can be simulated. Then external load is simulated by solar simulator or sunbeam, or sometimes it is with IR load. Internal load is simulated by operating satellite or by heater. So many times, once you switch on the different packages, actual the power dissipation, distribution, and the scenario can be simulated using the satellite. In case if there is any limitation, any of the specific package, then they use localized heater on those packages and they simulate. Temperatures are measured and compared with the calculated. What about once the satellite configuration test uh, configuration is finalized in advance for a given configuration whatever test is going to be simulated we do the advanced estimation temperature once we do the estimated temperature calculation then subsequently after the completion of the test we do compare those temperature with earlier estimated temperature and the observed temperature we try to correlate them what are the limitation what are the deficiencies or what are the changes we need to carry out for this difference we try to find out why this difference is there and based on that we try to update our model wherever required and then we calculate back the temperature and we see to that our temperature after updating the mathematical model, this temperature distribution is calculated back and uh, we have seen that all those uh, test results and all things are thoroughly reviewed. Mathematical model will be updated again and then subsequently we uh, calculate the temperature under the various scenario. Okay, So this is what we do for the test is concerned but detailed test again will be uh, reviewed 
by set of uh, people there are committees are there they do calculate what are the limitation they try to compare it what is the difference then how to update the thing and uh, subsequently so all again all the temperatures and scenario on the worst case condition temperatures are evaluated documented and circulated to all the concerned designers so with this i'm completing my uh, thermal design presentation for total satellite satellite thermal design is carried out based on the previous in orbit experience it's any of this uh, scenario it is available thermal design verified with detailed thermal analysis thermal balance test and integrated spacecraft testing some of the input interfaces delta t or change in temperature all those things we get from the integrated satellite testing also spacecraft thermal imprenation is carried out at a different stages because thermal imprenation is completed as and when we get the different inputs and requirement satellite testing is carried out after finalization of final satellite configuration and completion of thermal implementation spacecraft thermal design and detailed analysis will confirm the temperature specification to be met within the specified limit throughout the mission period of the satellite that is the main aim of the thermal designer and thermal design team with this i am completing my presentation if you have any specific question please welcome you are welcome yeah student please go ahead student any question you can ask excuse me sir yeah please sir what are some proceed sir what are the composite material sir uh see composite material nowadays many time use for the satellite phase shift purpose mainly as some of the brackets are made up of composite material like m55 j that kind of material which is easily available as far as india is concerned because most of these things are otherwise they are imported but in india at least we have this m55 j m18 so that is mainly used for the satellite solar panel purpose where they use for the phase shift purpose otherwise some of the brackets they make out of composite material any other students kartik anything uh, so nothing sir i guess that's it okay so Please. thank you very much uh, okay. mr barbe okay 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 so i am sure that you have given lot of insight about the thermal system okay. and the students uh, if they still want so probably they can send email to kartik and then okay. we'll that will be better that that will be better any query they can write a mail to him and he can collect all thing and send to me yeah sure. okay. okay 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 thank you very much thank you very much thank you. Uh, barbe for your help Okay. 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 Thank you, Mr. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, sir.